not being content with what you have, nor revilers, those that, that hate others, those that look upon others with evil intentions, extortioners, those that take advantage of people for money, none of these shall inherit the kingdom of God. But look what it says for those that have been washed in the blood of Jesus through repentance of their sins and faith in Christ. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, ye are sanctified, ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. you have. Okay, you're Here, I'll introduce it to you. This is sexuality. Yeah. This is Catholic sacraments. This is Mary. This is defending our faith with Protestants. This is how to become a Catholic. And, you know, the good news, uh, how to pray the rosary and meditate in Christ's life and general things about God. And yeah. Jesus, yeah. So how do you enter into the kingdom of God according to Catholic? Catholic doctrine. Uh, well, it's uh, according to Scripture. Not yeah. According to Scripture. According to Scripture. It's uh, baptism. The Scripture says that all over. So you, now, baptism listen, saves you. Just listen to me. Just listen to me. It's where you're regenerated and and uh, regenerated. Uh, what, what do we call it? Yeah. Yeah. Regenerated is the baptism. The scripture says so. Where at? And I'll show you. Yeah. Just allow yeah. me to speak. Go ahead. Because I haven't got the thought out yet. Sure. Yeah. So if you want to continue, you have to allow me to get my thoughts out, okay? Yeah, I've just had questions. I mean, I just wanted to yeah. see where you're coming from. I know you do. Yeah. This is only going to work if you work with me. I don't know why you're so intense. I mean, <laughs> Because I, I know the character of your type. You're falsely so accusing me? No, I'm not falsely accusing I know what oh. I'm doing. So, you, know exactly so you're God? You can okay, see my okay. character right let, now? Let me tell you something. I don't understand. Let me tell you something. Let's, let's end this. I have planned well, well, why? I want you to go I want you to move back to where you were because this is not going well. Okay? So be on your way. I haven't said it. I've just yeah, asked yeah, some questions. Have. Yeah, you have. You have. You have. Sir. No, I'm I'm asking you to how I'm just asking you how baptism saves you. That's all. Uh, yes, and that's what got us in trouble because we couldn't have a peaceful conversation. Uh, but I'm I'm totally at peace. You you okay, seem like you're wanna, getting angry. We'll try it one more time. Okay. If you step across the line, we're in. What here. what's the line? I want to know what the line well, okay, is. Okay. Okay. That, that's it. We're done. We're done. We're so done. so done. I can't step across the line. You don't have a line for. Okay. You, how about said, how about you just talk you said, and you I'll said, listen. You said that you were interested, but all you want to do is criticize. How do I step across the line? You know. So. No. No. I'm. You at, already know. I already taught you, so you don't need to ask me. So. You already know. You don't. You don't have to ask me. I already taught you. You didn't teach me anything. You I just said. I taught you what stepping across the line was. So you already, you already, we already did it. So. We already did it. Yeah. Okay. So how does baptism save you? I'll listen. Well. Well, we'll we'll use scripture. Regeneration is when you're born again. It's it's Titus three five says he saved us by washing. That's water, of regeneration. That's born Titus again. Titus what? No, leave your scripture away. I, leave I'm my asking, scripture away. Yes, yeah, or else we won't continue. Titus 3, 5. No, we're not going to continue if you get your Bible out. You ask me the question. We're I'm not going to continue if I get my Bible out. No, we're not going to continue. You right. See, this is the spirit in Catholicism right yeah, here. Yeah, it, it is. You can condemn me if you like. You're good at it. So No, away. I'm. you're yeah, condemning yourself. Go. Yes, there you go again. Titus 3, 5. There you go again. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he yeah. shed on us yeah. through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Yeah. Now, that washing is the blood of Jesus. It's not baptism. Okay. Just so you know in context. It's no, the blood I, of Jesus. I know, and I do know you're wrong. So no, that's not baptism. I, I know it's not in your eyes because you... You alter scripture to fit your theology. Or no, actually, theology. the Catholic Church yes, has altered scripture throughout history. 
No, no. The Absolutely. Our beliefs have been solid for 2,000 years. No. But let, let me tell you why. There was an ancient church let before me, the Catholic to Church. Me, listen to me. Let me tell you. I used to be Catholic, listen so to you're me. talking to the yeah, choir. That, <laughs> so, no, I'm not, no, I'm so I'm not judging you. I'm just exposing no, the not. doctrine. The fact that you used to be Catholic yeah. is much worse. No, then, it's not. Listen to me. <laughs> you don't listen. You keep interrupting me. Uh, go ahead. Ex-Catholics are the most... Uh, uh, condemning of Catholics. You're I'm not one, condemning you. I haven't condemned you, you at all. Did. You just did. Yeah, you just did. No, I haven't. I just corrected you oh, about okay. that scripture. Okay, That's all. I didn't condemn let, you. Let me ask you something. Go ahead. Can we have a serious conversation? I've been serious. <laughs> okay. Can we? Sure. Okay. I'm asking you to go back to your business. Oh, you don't want to talk. Okay. No, I don't want to talk. I'm all right. Done. Well, this is heresy, just so you know. But, oh, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. So. Some more garbage coming out of your mouth. <laughs> well, you'll hear us preaching, so definitely. Yeah. We're going to we're going to preach and you can call the cops if you want. Okay. Or you waste your time, sir. How you doing? Good. Living for Jesus? No? Why not? No? You don't like him? I don't dislike him. So, you know he's the savior of the world. And without him, you have no hope in, the, in, etern in life after death, pretty much. Okay. You believe you're going to die one day? Everyone's going to die one day. That's right. You believe you have a soul? Yeah. So where's it going to go? I'll figure it out when I get there. Well, that's going to be too late then, man. That's you got to figure, you gotta figure it out now. I'm not, I'm not too concerned with... Uh, Right here in this moment. Yeah, a lot of people do that, man. But <clears throat> unfortunately, that's that's a bad outlook on life. I mean, you got to think about death and where you're going to be after you die one day. You know what I'm saying? And the only answer to that death is through Jesus Christ, man. I mean, you, you don't see how what you're doing is a little bit reactionary. What What are we doing? signs like this could potentially get people upset. Well, if I had a sign that said, God loves you and everybody's going to heaven, do you think people would get upset? No. Oh, because it sounds good to their ears, right? But what if it's not the truth, though? Should I, should I lie to people to, just so that people, like, feel good about themselves? Or should I tell them the truth because I love them, even though, they might, even though they might react the wrong way? You know? Let me get my thoughts in order. Hold on. <laughs> it's okay. Your message of love is, is counteracted when you have a sign that, that identifies individual groups of people who are going to hell. Like, well, what like, if they, okay, what if they really are going to hell? Okay, but who's to say your interpretation of the Bible is any different than anyone? Well, else? how do you interpret the Bible when it I says... I don't interpret the Bible, I've never read it. Oh, you never read it? Okay, so you're trying to tell me how to interpret the Bible having never read it. To tell you okay, so if the Bible says homosexuals, in the Greek, the word is... What is it? Por, pornea? Pornea? What's the Greek word? Uh, Arsenokotai. Arsenokotai. Malakoi, Malakoi is homosexual. Arsenokotai is a sodomite. That's the Greek words that describe sodomites and homosexuality, right? In the Bible. And it says that they will not enter the kingdom of God, point blank. I mean, along with murderers and liars and fornicators, which are people that have sex before marriage, blasphemers, idolaters, they will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, why? That I'm really not going well, you didn't make the world, bro. You didn't make yourself in your mother's womb. God did. God made the world. God made the universe. God made the rules. It's just that simple. And if a good God created us to have good things and to live in a perfect world one day, then I think he's worthy enough to be able to set those rules and to say, nope, you can't do this. If you do this, you're my enemy. I mean, if you went and ran a stop sign or a stoplight, you get a ticket. If you killed somebody in the law of the land, you'll go to jail probably for some, some, some states, you'll get the death penalty because it's just judgment, right? But God who's perfect and sees the heart, he's gonna judge sinners, but he gives them a chance before, even being enemies, before they die to come to him. I mean, that's, that's, just, that's really what it is. I'm, I'm and that's not, a message of love. I'm not here to debate the ethics of religion. I'm, not, I'm actually, I'm just sitting here. You're good. Oh, I know. 
I know. All I'm, I'm trying to get you to understand, or at least maybe help you understand that that is a lot better way to get your point across. Right, right. So let me let me tell you this. Let me let me ask you this question. If I came to you like that, and just hypothetically in your mind, right? If I came to you like that, right? And that leads you to burn in the lake of fire for eternity. But you see me coming to you like this, and yet this is the truth of the gospel. Right? There it is again. You don't know that. Though. Sure I do. You That's How do you know he doesn't know that? Because there's How do you know what he knows? There's a million different interpretations of every single That's, not true. That's not true. Going from someone who's never read the Bible, it's really kind of funny. Tell someone how to interpret the Bible, you it It's not true, man. No, it's not a fact. <clears throat> okay, so, so when the Bible says, repent or perish, what does that mean? Jesus said, unless you all likewise repent, then you shall all likewise perish. What, is, what does that mean? Right. And thousands upon thousands of different people believe different things. So what makes you so sure that your interpretation is the correct? Well, it's not my interpretation. It's what the you Bible have an says. Entirely different religion on there. Muslim. You have an entirely different. Okay, religion. but why would why would Muslims go to hell? I don't know. It's on your side. Okay, so according to the Bible, Muslims believe in a different God. Let them. Okay, yeah. well, let them go to hell. You don't love them. We love them. We don't want them to go to hell. Absolutely we know. And how do you, how do you know that the Bible, the Bible is the Word of God? Because of two things. One, because it's inspired by the Lord, inspired by God, and you can prove that by prophecies in the Old Testament that have historically come to pass, not only about the Messiah, but in historical events. Namely, the children of Israel, different, different events that have happened through history that were spoken of hundred. 100, 100 to 1500 years before they even happened and they came to pass. No man could have predicted any of those things in such detail except God. And not only that, it exposes the heart of man as sinners, you know, when they're sinners. I'm not saying we're born sinners. I'm not saying we all have to sin. I'm saying that when, when it's talking about sinners, it exposes the heart so in detail, more than any other book. And it shows the way of salvation. Jesus himself said, he was recorded as saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. That's making himself exclusive of every other faith, man. So either Jesus is lying, he's either lying, or he really is what he said he is, you know? And if he really is what he said he is, then you should pay attention to what he has to say. Because your soul could depend upon it. Seriously. Would you say you have an open mind? Okay. But you haven't read the Bible. No. So would you be open to reading the Bible? Sure. Okay. If I get around to it, I, I just... What's keeping you from reading the Bible? Schoolwork. Huh? Schoolwork. Well... I got more important things going on in my life. I don't not, think I'm so. Not, and I'm not saying your religion is not important. I think everyone has a right to practice... I, I don't care if you say it's not important or not. I mean, I'm, I'm secure in Christ. I mean... I, I believe that. We get, we get heckled all the time, so it's I not know, like... And that's, I, what I'm trying to say is, I feel like a part of you, like you're wearing the GoPro. Mm -hmm. I feel like a part of you knows that doing this is going to get a lot of people upset. And I think a little part of you, and I'm not going to tell you how you feel, I just think personally, a little part of you likes that. I oh, think that's so, why you have this big reaction. So you're, you're, you're pretending to be God right now. I'm not pretending to be anybody. I'm, I'm, I'm me. Well, I mean, you're assuming something about me that's not true. That's, what I, that's why okay. I said. So, so we have the GoPros because I have a YouTube channel and we, we post videos on YouTube for yeah. teaching, edification. So you're looking for clicks, I think. Clicks? Wait, I, I don't get a lot of clicks on my videos, man. You did an absolute statement about him that was false. Yeah. You assumed something about him that was false. And now you're declaring it as if it's absolute. Here's what's true. You are holding a reactionary sign. You I'm are holding a sign that is truthful. It's truthful. The people react to it is their own fault, not my fault. Who are you that's to right. say what's true? The well, Bible I, says. I have God's word on it. God's word right. is true. Okay. I'm saying, I spit declare what God says. That's right. I spit a lot, of, a lot of facts and not trying to, I'm trying to spin this. To, to you are saying. Just because you believe the Bible is ambiguous and vague, even though you've never read it. Never said that. Never, I never said that. Well, you, you are saying it's ambiguous and vague because you're saying my interpretation wrong. There's billions of interpretations. That sounds like you're, you're claiming it's vague and ambiguous. I'm just be telling you it's very clear cut 
and what the Bible says is true, and you haven't even read it for yourself. Yeah. You're going to sit here and tell us that our interpretation is wrong. That is like someone going to a mechanic saying, don't fix it like that. Have you ever even seen a car before? No, I've never seen a car before. But I would tell you how to fix this car, mechanic. You make no sense, man. Yeah. You, you come around here and laugh and mock and scoff at us, and it was our fault that you mock and scoff and laugh. It's your fault you're mocking Scott and laughing. That's not my really fault. Upset right now. So because I declared the truth. No, he's not upset. Word, he's just passionate. He's, nothing. he's not upset. I declare the truth of God's word. You can react to it any way you want. You can That's react right. to humility, boastfulness, laughing, mocking, apathy. I don't care. It's up to you. Me saying, me simply stating the fact that there are hundreds of other interpretations of religious Now it's hundreds. Okay. It was millions before. Millions, thousands, whatever you want me to say. Me stating, how about this? I'll, I'll keep it simple for you. Me stating the fact. This is an objective fact. There are a hundred other interpretations of religious text. That's not saying that yours is wrong. And you, you know seem what? You, to you assume I'm trying to convince you uh, uh, that your religion is false. I'm not. I'm just trying to get you to see that what you're doing here is... is Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop you right there. Okay. Yeah. You said I'm not trying to persuade your religion is false. Yeah, this not. is my religion. Is this false? This is my religion. What this sign says is stating what my religion says. Am I wrong? I don't think you're wrong or wrong. I think, I then think why are you arguing with us about how we shouldn't be doing right. it this way if we're not wrong? Yeah. Because I think it's extreme. You're like, you're like the perpetual walking contradiction. That's right. You want to tell us we're wrong, but you don't want to, because that would seem intolerant if you told us we were wrong. Yeah. You'd be, you'd be just like us if you told us we were wrong. See, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. You want to tell us we're wrong, wrong, but you know you have no foundation to do so because you'd be just like us then. So then I'm right. I'm not saying you're right either. It's, it's, it's not a black and white thing. Right? Okay, so just because other people have different interpretations means nothing. It means nothing. It doesn't mean I cannot have security and confidence that the way right, I see the right, Bible is true. What I'm trying to say here is that I think this is the wrong way to go about it. I think, I think there's a nicer way to get this message across. I think. I what think if the Bible tells me to do it this way? Well then. And that's what my religion said. Yeah. So why, why would you try to stop me from doing my religion then? We haven't even started preaching yet. Then have a good day. I'm going to go talk to these people. They seem a lot nicer. That's how the I'm devil... Help you when they have the lie. That's, oh. that's how the devil does it. Kisses. You just wasted your entire conversation with a bisexual person, by the way. You're nah. a part-time homosexual. Congratulations. That's right. Repent before you go to hell. If they comfort you in your sin and wickedness, it's not going to help you one bit. Nope. Sure isn't. You'll scream at them on Judgment Day in hell. Why didn't you, to you? Exactly. Why didn't you tell me the truth? <sighs> Jesus said he must be born again. You cannot see his kingdom. Don't these false teachers to the right of us deceive you? Man. The Roman Catholic Church is false. Yep. Led by a false teacher, a false Christ claims to be the representation of Christ on the earth, yeah. but yet he believes and proclaims all kinds of wicked, abominable, and unbiblical things. God commands all men everywhere to, to repent. repent. Because there's coming a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. In the book of Proverbs, the Bible says, faithful are the wounds of a, of a friend. friend. But the kisses of the enemy are deceitful. So you go to someone, and they give you a hug, they pat you on the back, they give you a little tickle on your ear, a little scratch of your back. You think, they must have the truth. They're making me feel good about myself. Is that the way it works? Did the Pharisees feel good when Jesus rebuked them and called them whitewashed tombs full of dead man's bones? Did the Pharisees feel good when John the Baptist called them a brood of vipers and said the, the axe is already laid to the root of the tree and is near to being cast into the fire? Of course not. But that doesn't mean that Jesus and John the Baptist were preaching false things Man. or doing things the wrong way. Fake way to look at things. But in this spineless generation, where no one can even stand to have someone disagree with them, 
and they want to cancel their life if you don't agree with them. That's what we've developed here. But your parents have developed, because they haven't spanked you and disciplined you, the way you need. But society has developed when someone disagrees with somebody and wants them canceled. <coughs> now I don't believe Joe Rogan's right with God. I don't care for his podcast. You may watch one clip of any of his videos, but they're trying to cancel him because of his views on the pandemic. And I'm here to tell you, this cancel culture, <coughs> wait till judgment day when God cancels you, sinner. God is calling you to repentance while you still have time. He's calling you to give up your sins and turn in humble, childlike faith to Jesus. Man. The one who died on that bloody cross for you. Beaten and bruised, wounded for you. He doesn't reappear in a wafer and a glass of wine every, every Saturday around the world. He died once for all. Amen. One time. Not every Saturday, not every Sunday, not every Mass. He died once for all. <coughs> we're not cannibals. When Jesus said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part in my kingdom, he was not promoting drinking blood and being a cannibal. Nope. The law is against drinking blood, and even the Gentiles, according to Acts 15, would have no part in blood. Jesus was talking in spiritual metaphors. Amen. Unless you partake in what he did on the cross, his sacrifice for you, you have no hope. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the light. No man comes to the Father but by me. There is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Beware of these false so-called Christian religions that base their belief off of some wicked man or a council of wicked men and not upon God's word. Yeah. Scripture says about itself. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. See that? Profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. That's the Bible. That's the word of God. I need man's words. I need theological books. I need religion classes at a college. I need some supposed religious authority to tell me the truth. I have God's word and no amount of mocking, scoffing, laughing. Don't just take a picture, come talk. Why don't you come find out? What makes y'all better than me? Who what said we're better than you? Because y'all are getting into heaven and I'm not. Why aren't you? Because of Jesus Christ, not because we're better. Nope. No, that's not what it sounds like to me. Well, it sounds like you're a coward. You know what needs to happen though, young man? You do need to repent. Yep. Well, I'm not repenting. Well, that's the problem then. So for all practical purpose and reason, I am better than you in that sense. I'm not living in sin anymore. But I'm only saved by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. That's what saves me. Not baptism. Not some group. Jesus Christ saved me. But the That's problem right, just Jesus. Is you don't want to be saved. And you want to continue in your sin and be a wicked devil. Yeah. God's calling you to repentance. And because you don't like that, you can't falsely accuse me. I believe something different. You know, moving down 50 feet, sir, won't make what you believe any more truthful. Jesus Christ, you must be born again. You must be born again. Couldn't hold a candle to scripture. Your Roman Catholic traditions will perish with you. Stop Jesus twisting scripture. You draw near to me with your mouth and honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me teaching traditions as if they're the word of God. That's right. And they're not. Your traditions are not God's word. Traditions are wicked. They can't hold up under the scrutiny of scripture, under the scrutiny of God's word. Don't end up in hell because of your sin. Rather turn from your sin. 
turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who died for you on the cross, the one who offered you forgiveness and cleansing and mercy by his dead blood, but he calls you to repentance. He commands all men everywhere to repent. He calls all men everywhere <laughs> to flee the wrath of God that is to come. Amen. Don't die in your sins. Don't go to hell for your sin. Even if your sin is false religion, your false religion will damn you too. The first and second of the Ten Commandments condemns idolatry, condemns worship of a God who does not exist, a God you've made up in your own imagination to suit your sin, to suit your condemning conscience, and to make you think you're right with God when you're not. Raised in a certain religion? Uh, no, not really. Oh. My parents don't believe what you want to believe. Yeah. So, where does truth come from? You want to tell the truth or not? Huh? I have no idea. Okay. But is the truth important, though? Yeah. I mean, what, what are you here for if you're not here for truth? I have no idea. You have no idea what you're here for? No. Not really. Okay. Sounds to me like you really just don't want to talk. That's all there is to it. I mean, I'm just not that much with religion or religion. Yeah, but you're going to die someday, man. Yeah. And, and you may have the rest of your life ahead of you, but it may, may just be one day. Yeah, true. So shouldn't that give you some urgency to figure these things out? Uh, not really. So you don't care about eternity, where you're going to spend it? I don't know where I'm going to spend it. What's my point? Did you figure that out? I mean, if you, even if you live to be 100 years old here on Earth, it's kind of almost unheard of. That's nothing compared to eternity, right? Yeah. So common sense tells you you should figure these things out. Even if you put everything else aside, your, you know, whatever occupation you're going <coughs> to derive from your four-year degree here, if you finish four years here, if that actually derives an occupation for you, that's nothing compared to eternity. You become a millionaire. Just saying, man, it's important. Yeah, no. Apathy's not going to help you at this point. Yeah. What happens after? Well, you won't say that when you end up in hell, man. You won't say, you won't say whatever happens, happens when you're in burning fire. Forever. I mean, come on, man. Really? If that's really true, do you really think it's like, oh, whatever happens, happens? I mean, God talked. God give us this doctrine about eternal hell to persuade us, to influence us, to not go there. Yeah. Right? It's like the laws of the land are there to tell you don't go to jail. But you want to go to jail? If, if there's a law in this land that you are breaking unbeknownst to you, wouldn't you want to know about it and stop doing it so you wouldn't go to jail? You wouldn't say whatever happens, happens then, would you? Then you wouldn't be going to school, you wouldn't have a job, you wouldn't have a life, you'd just be in jail cell. Right, but if, what I'm asking you is if you, if you were doing something wrong and didn't know about it, wouldn't you want to know about it so you can stop doing what's wrong so you wouldn't go to jail? I haven't done something wrong yet. That you know of. That's my point. So once again, if there's something you're doing wrong that you didn't know about, wouldn't you want to know about it so you wouldn't have to go to jail? How do we know what's right and wrong? Well, the law of the land would tell you what is right and wrong. If you break down a law book, someone shows you, listen, look. You go to jail for a long time, you don't stop it. Yeah, but I haven't done anything wrong. 
That's what you say. Yeah. But you don't know that. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. If you're ignorant of it, wouldn't you want to know about it? Of course you would. And jail is nothing compared to hell. Hell is forever. Yeah. So I'm trying to give you two examples. <coughs> I don't know. Whatever happens, happens, you know. Whatever. I don't care. I'm just here to go to school, get a job. But then eternity comes, you're in hell forever. And God's going to say, why were you so apathetic? Why didn't you care? Why did you care more about going to school and getting a job and making money than about eternity and me dying for you on the cross? Make this to me. Tough. Oh, God, it'll shrug your shoulders at you someday. That's tough. It's like a zombie, man. That's really tough, man. That's a that's a that's a dangerous place to be. That's a, I I'd rather somebody flaming angry at me. Me too. If we had the apathetic like that. Yeah. At least you know God's doing something. Oh man. Lord, if you haven't submitted to him as Lord of your life, <coughs> King of your life, you are a rebel in his universe. He will deal with you accordingly someday. But now, he sent ambassadors in his kingdom to you to call you to repentance, to plead with you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. That's what we're here to do. To plead with you on Christ's behalf. To be reconciled to God through the sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ. The only way, the only ground God has provided for you to be made right with him is through his son, Jesus Christ. And while there's many people who claim to know Jesus Christ, claim to be right with God, very few actually are. And Jesus said you should know them by their fruit. And Jesus said, you fruit of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good things. The evil man, out of the evil treasure, brings forth evil things. See? What comes out of your heart, what comes out of your mouth, what comes out of your life, Proves whether you're right with God or not. So anyone who claims they know Jesus is going to go to a building on Sunday and claim to be a Christian. Any false cult can claim to be the true church, but the proof is in the pudding. Is what you believe actually biblical? Is what you're doing actually proof of the Holy Spirit? And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. Faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's the fruit of the Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit of God, if you're born again, if you're right with God, you'll have the fruit of the Spirit in your life. And the Bible says you will reap what you sow. If you sow to please the flesh, you reap destruction. If you sow to please the Spirit, there is everlasting life. In fact, Jesus Christ himself said this, that if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So tell me, do you really have the Holy Spirit? Are you really born again? Do you really love Jesus Christ? What does the fruit of your life say about you? What does it tell on you? To tell everybody you're right with God? Or to tell everybody that you are on your way to hell as a sinner. My friend Adam talked to these Catholic heretics over here a little while ago. And the guy said to him, if you're breaking out your Bible, the conversation's over. Yeah. Give me a break. You claim to be a Christian, but when someone opens the Bible, the conversation's over? What do you base your religion on? It's not upon God's word and the teachings and writings of the apostles and the teachings of Jesus Christ when he was in the flesh. The only hope we have 
to be in the truth and submit to the truth of God's word. God's word is truth. God wants to sanctify you, cleanse you by his truth. Are you right with God today? I don't know. Maybe. Possibly. Would you like to know if you are or not? No, I don't care. I just got the bus. Okay, well, you'll carry on judgment day. I hope it's dead. No, you'll be in hell. It will matter. Have a good day. Have a good eternity. Get right with God. Repent of your sins before you end up in hell and under judgment and God's wrath. No, it won't be like that. It'll be like, ah! That's what it'll be like in hell, sinner. Not wave your hands, act like it's no big deal. Hell is not no big deal. Hell is a big deal. And you sinners don't want to go there, I guarantee it. No matter how much you boast and pride with your mouth, no matter how apathetic you are, you don't want to go to hell. What, for porn watching? You go to hell for porn watching? You go to hell for fornication and drug use and getting drunk? <laughs> for having a filthy mouth that you go to hell for? You must really not value your soul. You must really not value your soul. To go to hell for such stupid little pleasure. But the preaching of the cross is foolishness. Those who are perishing. Yes, I know many of you think this preaching we're doing now is foolishness. It matters none to me what you think of it. It matters to me what God thinks of it. And God is pleased with the preaching of his word. And God saves sinners by the preaching of his word. Romans 10 says, how can they believe on the one of that heard? How can they hear without a preacher? How beautiful are the feet that bring the gospel of peace. That scripture talks about feet, which are probably the most dirtiest part of our bodies, especially back then when they were open shoes with no sock. But God calls them beautiful when they bring forth the gospel. God calls them beautiful. And they are. Because God's word, God's truth, God's gospel is beautiful. It's the only means by which you can be saved only means by which you can be made right with God is through the gospel of Jesus Christ. What's it going to take for you to wake up and pay attention? What's it going to take for you to wake up and think about your eternity and where you're heading and get your eyes off the temporal things that matter not in eternity and set your eyes on things above, on things that do matter in eternity? What's it going to take to wake you up? Get you to get off your phones. Unplug your ears with your earbuds. Stop gluing your face to TV. And actually take heed. Open God's Word, the Bible, and read it. Amen. <clears throat> and seek God's face. And get off all the foolish things you're doing that waste your time. TV shows, video games, movies, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, whatever it is that's wasting your time, that's wasting your life, and actually consider your soul and where you're going to be for all eternity. You know, back in my, when I was a young person, we called them microwave, the fast food generation. They wanted everything right now. I don't know what to call this generation, but it's much worse. <coughs> Proverbs 30 talks about this generation. Generation that curses its father and does not bless its mother. A generation that's pure in its own eyes. It is not washed from its filthiness. You think you're pure, you think you're doing things right, because you don't you don't condemn, you don't tell the non-binary people they're wrong, or because you stand up for supposed LGBT rights, you think you're on the right path. But God says you're pure in your own eyes, yet not washed from your filthiness. 
Newsflash, God is binary. God made them Adam and Eve. Not Adelaide and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Adam and Eve. God is binary. God did not make men and women's bodies or women and men's bodies. That's a lie of the devil to confuse you and deceive you, to get you to stay in your sin and go to hell. Yeah. That's all it is. <coughs> the scheme of the enemy to deceive you and send you to hell. And that's his primary purpose in life is to deceive you and send you to hell with him. But he also wants you to worship him as if he is God and treat the God of the Bible as if he's the devil. And most of you do that too. You treat the God of the Bible as if he's the devil. So he's intolerant, he's politically incorrect, he condemns sinners to hell, he calls you to repentance of sin, and there's only one way. Pretty intolerant. That's the God of the Bible. He's pretty just mental too. Most people will be condemned to hell by the God of the Bible. But the God you supposedly know and serve who thinks everyone's okay except for people like me, of course. <laughs> Everyone else is right with God. That's the devil. That's not the God of the Bible. Mm. He wants you to be confused. He wants you to be deceived. He's the father of lies. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Christ came to give you life and life abundantly. Repent of your sin. Amen. Turn to him in childlike, humble faith. Be born again of the Holy Spirit and obey him the rest of your days. It's the only hope you have. It's the only hope you have. You have no hope in your false religion. You have no hope in your church attendance or being dipped in some water, whether as a baby or as a teenager. The only hope you have is in Christ. You have no hope in your false tongues. You only have hope in Christ. Man. In saving you and changing you and transforming you into a new creature. Amen. My brother said, as he quoted out of Proverbs 27, open rebuke is better than secret love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. And so the devil comes many times like a, like a friend with soft kisses telling you soft things that tickle your ears. And you might think, judging in the flesh, that it's the truth because it's so tolerant, because it's so accepting, because it seems like love. But behind that soft kisses of an enemy are dead men's bones that lead to destruction. And so though you might hear something from somebody that's soft and loving, and kind at times, not to say that Jesus isn't soft and loving and kind at times, but don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Seek the Lord and fear the Lord and turn from iniquity, as the Bible says. You see, preachers have been going out into the world for centuries, sharing the message of repentance turning from your sin and turning to God, putting down your pride and humbling yourself like a little child before God and receiving repentance and faith. But instead, people would rather hear soft things so that they can keep their sin and pretend to know God. But what does the Scripture say? Are you going by your traditions of men? Or are you going by the ancient scriptures that were written down by servants of God, followers of Jesus, prophets of the Lord? What is your standard of truth? You're going to school. 
Are you finding the truth here? What are they teaching you? How do you know it's true? What about your life? What about your death? Where are you going to go when you die? Because I think we can all agree that we're all going to die in this body one day. And the God of heaven and earth, almighty, all-knowing, all-powerful, all-omniscient, which is all-present, he's everywhere, formed you in your mother's womb. You didn't form yourself. You didn't create the earth you walk on. You didn't create the lungs you breathe or the air that you breathe in. You didn't create any of that for yourself. So why do you think you can lord your own life by yourself and expect to be okay when you die, when you haven't given yourself to God, but yet you've chosen the things that God hates? And some ignorantly, I understand, but some willingly, some on purpose. They made a willful choice to disobey God. Nevertheless, in both cases, God calls all men and women everywhere to repent. The Bible says, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Repentance is a turning away from sin to God, forsaking all your sin, which is an offense against God, and turning to Jesus Christ in faith and believing on what he did. Baptism doesn't save you. I was baptized into the Catholic Church when I was a baby. I was an innocent baby. I wasn't born a sinner. I was innocent. And they believe that that baptism in the Catholic Church will take care of my original sin. I was an altar boy. I, was, I went through the sacrament of reconciliation confirmation. I went through catechism. I studied the Catholic catechism. And then God made me born again through Jesus Christ. And I studied the Bible. I read the Bible for myself. And I found that Catholic catechism is heresy. And it's leading people to hell. And you can look throughout history at people who opened the Bible and debated against the Catholic Church, they ended up dead because the spirit of Catholicism is the spirit of Antichrist. I open up the script, one scripture to this man and he gets angry because he cannot explain from scripture the doctrine of salvation. Oh no, come to the Catholic Church and get baptized and take Holy Communion, and then you'll be saved. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches we are saved by grace through faith. The blood of Jesus, which was shed on the cross and is at the mercy seat of, the, uh, of God in heaven, not a, sh not a shadow of the things to come, not the mercy seat that was in the temple, but the mercy seat of the throne of God. The blood of Jesus was shed as an atonement so that when God the Father looks at that blood, it's an atoning for your sin. And if you believe in it, if you have faith in Christ, you turn from your sin and you throw yourself at the mercy seat. Say, Lord, I believe the blood of Jesus washes me from my sin. I turn away. I want to follow you. Then ye shall be saved. If you endure to the end by his grace, there's a born again experience. Jesus said, you must be born again. Jesus did not say, go get baptized for salvation. He said, repent. Baptism according to Peter, which is not the first pope. My fucking ass. Hey, watch your mouth. My ass, watch your mouth. Fuck you. Watch your mouth. That's wicked. You're a pervert. Is that your IQ? You see, and that's the problem with this generation. You're a pervert. And see, that's the problem with this generation. 
You have a bunch of sexual perverts walking around pretending that they believe God. And then you have people coming out here with false doctrine trying to hug them, trying to say it's okay, come to the Catholic Church and get baptized and take the communion and be saved, and you haven't done anything for them. Catholic doctrine is heresy according to the Word of God. You don't pray to saints. You don't pray to Mary. Mary is not the co-redemptrix. Mary is not the mother of God. Jesus said there's one advocate, or Paul wrote, there's one advocate with the Father, the man Christ Jesus. We can go to Jesus Christ alone. We don't have to go through any saints. We don't have to go through no Mary. We don't have to go through no priest, no cardinal, no bishop, no pope. You can go to Jesus alone. And the Catholic Church has a lot of blood on their hands of the saints throughout history. And the only way to get that blood off your hands is to repent of your sins and turn from your idolatry, your idolatry of Mary, your idolatry of popes, your idolatry of sacraments and traditions of men that you bow to. I've been to monasteries before, and I've seen what they do in those monasteries. They kneel before relics of dead saints, and they pray to them. They kneel before statues of Benedict and of, and of Dom Dom Dominic and all these things, and they pray and ask their blessings. No, man. No. Catholic Church is idolatry. It's idolatry. And they'll come at you in such sweetness and kindness, and they'll lead you to hell. Because sweet are the kisses of an enemy. He's already complaining. Sweet are the kisses of an enemy. Deceitful, sorry. Deceitful are the kisses of an enemy. Thank you, brother. Deceitful. So the enemy will come smooth. Just like that man that wants to have sex with you, women, he'll come to you smooth, making you feel like he loves you, making you feel like he's the only one for you. But once he has you, has your body, he's gone because he's a dog. That's like the Catholic Church. They come to you smooth, and they don't give you any life. That's what we're doing. This is love. You don't know what love is, young man. You don't know what love is. How do you know what love is? If, we, if we're spreading love, you wouldn't know what love is because you don't know it. This is love. To tell people that your sin is taking you to hell and you can, have a, you can be delivered out of hell through the blood of Jesus. Come to Jesus. God is love. But your love is not God's love. And so God's love looks like hate to you because God is going to cast sinners into the lake of fire unless they repent of their sin and come to Jesus for salvation. As the Bible says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death. That's the promise to those that fear the Lord. Jesus himself said, Fear not man who can kill the body and have nothing that he could do after that. What is that? Matthew 10. And fear not them which kill the body and are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Jesus said that. Fear God. A lot of people fear to run a red light in traffic because they're going to get hit by another car or get a ticket. But they won't fear God. A lot of people fear the coronavirus, the COVID-19, enough to wear a face mask and get jabbed up with a vaccine. But they won't fear God and turn from iniquity. Most people will fear to murder somebody, steal from a store, because they don't want to go to jail. 
but they won't fear God and turn from iniquity. You see, this is the love of God, that Christ came into the earth to save sinners. Paul said he was chief, of, him, of whom I am chief, Paul said. That doesn't mean he's currently a sinner. That means he was the chief of sinners because he persecuted the saints. Paul did, a murderer. Paul was a murderer of Christians. He was a blasphemer. He was an idolater. And, and he said he did it in his ignorance because he believed that he was doing God's service. Even Paul can be, Paul was forgiven on the way to Damascus. He had purposed in his heart to go kill more Christians. If Paul, a murderer of God's people, can be saved, how much more can you be saved? If you repent of your sins, believe in Jesus Christ, be born again and follow him. Rules. No, it doesn't. The hell for that. No, it doesn't. Don't you ever say that. Catholic Church is idolatry. God don't want you to talk about Catholic Church is idolatry. Idolatry. Yeah. No. Idolatry. Catholic Church is idolatry, and it's going to burn one day when Jesus comes. Jesus is going to return. Jesus is going to return in flaming fire, and he's going to destroy the earth of all idols, including the Catholic Church. Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism. Wasn't Catholicism. Yes, I do. I sure do. The first Christian religion was not the Catholic Church. There was an ancient Celtic believing church in England before the Catholics even got there, bud. You don't know your you don't know your history. All right, you've been deceived. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Oh yeah, man. Take care. God bless you. What's your name? Mark. Mark. Yes. All right. Take care, man. <laughs> yeah. You what? I don't know why. What's up? I'm sorry. You're fine, bro. You're fine. I'm Mr. German. That man emails you want to shake your hand, dude. I don't know what happened. I just... What happened? I don't know. I just feel really sad right now. It's, yeah, it's man. Nothing but thank you for what y'all doing, bro. Yeah, really keep it. keep praying, right. brother. It's yeah. yeah. Take care, brother. All right. Yeah. Wow. Broken over his soul. Praise God. Lord bless Mark. Thank you for his soft heart. Yep. Yep, two totally different Jesuses. Though Jesus in the Quran is not the same as the Jesus in the Bible. Not even close. I call you guys on YouTube. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Oh, man. I want to see all the gold. Yeah, I want to see all the gold. I want to shake your hand as well. Oh. Thank you for doing this. Oh, well, people need to know. Glory to God. <laughs> yeah. Well, Take care. I'll be praying for y'all if they come and attack me again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Have a good day. The Bible says in Romans, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against un all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shewed it unto them. Yeah, you don't have to gossip us. You can come talk to us. God has shown it unto them. He's shown it unto them. Those that hold the truth and unrighteousness that God exists. We did not come from the Big Bang. We did not come from some primordial soup. We did not come from some rocks. We did not come from some monkeys. 
Macro Darwinian macro evolution is one of the stupidest theories that men have ever come up with to explain the origins of mankind. One of the stupidest theories. I mean, when you break down the arguments of macroevolution, they are the stupidest theories. Some Darwinian macroevolutionists are even now starting to talk about how maybe there was life before this planet and it was aliens. But then we still have the problem of where did the aliens come from and who created them? So no matter how you go away from God, you always have to come back to a creator. Because according to the law of biogenesis, life can only come from life. It can't come from non-life. For any biology majors, biogenesis. Law of biogenesis. So Darwinian macroevolution falls apart when you look at the fossil record, when you look at the DNA, when you look at the evidence of these so-called missing links, it falls apart. You too. God created you in his image and likeness. That means he gave you an eternal soul. You did not, you did not evolve from monkeys. You have a purpose before God in your life. There are absolute morals in his word. You have five senses that God gave you to use for his glory. And yet most people don't. I didn't at one point in my life. I used my five senses to be an enemy of God, to resist God, to do those things that please my flesh, like having sex before marriage, Drinking it up, smoking it up. Pride, arrogance, thinking I'm a tough guy. One of, you know. There's a lot of tough guys that think they're tough. That's pride. And I used my five senses in that pursuit. And it defiled me. But one day the Lord through a series of different people and different things he was doing in my life, drew me to a place where I saw that I was a sinner on the way to hell and that this Jesus Christ is a real person, that the Bible is testifying the truth, that sci atheistic scientists have been trying to debunk the Bible for years and it hasn't happened. It's the truth. You guys are deceived. And I found Christ. And I laid my life down and said, Lord, I repent of my sins in tears, brokenness, fear the Lord, come to the Lord. And he made me born again. I believed on his blood. I believed on himself. And I was set free. Set free from sinning even though there was a time where I willingly turned away from God for a season, went back to sin. But he still had mercy to not let me die in that sin, and he brought me back. And I repented again, and he saved me from that even, because he's long-suffering, and he's long-suffering with you because he doesn't want you to perish, even though you blindly follow sin and your pride and your mocking and your scoffing, but how long will God have mercy in that way to when your life will be over? Don't just assume because you go to church on Sunday that you're a Christian. Just because you sleep in a church, it doesn't make you a Christian any more than sleeping in McDonald's makes you a hamburger or sleeping in a barn makes you a horse. You must be born again. That's what Jesus told Nicodemus. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. He didn't say, go get baptized. He didn't say, go pray to Mary, go talk to my mother. Jesus didn't say, go talk to my mother. She's going to tell you how to get saved. You got to go through her to get to me. He didn't say that. Jesus didn't say, make a necklace 
and put your fingers on it and pray the Our Father and pray the Hail Mary. Hail Mary? That's idolatry. Jesus said not to be like the Gentiles, praying repetitive prayers like the heathen do. The Catholic Church is proving how heathenistic it is as it's implemented their pagan practices over the years. There's no purgatory. There's no purgatory to cleanse you for the kingdom of God. You got to get right with God now through repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. Turn from your sin. This sign shows some of those sins in the Bible. Thieves, drunkards, homosexuals, idolaters, fornicators, liars, mockers, blasphemers. And they glory in their shame. That's what the Bible says. And you glory in your shame. There'll be no glory when you die, sinner. There'll be no glory then. There'll be no mocking and flicking off the preachers. There'll be no cheering and mocking and walking in your proud looks anymore. When you die on your deathbed, when you're on your deathbed, there's going to be no more pride. Some maybe, but most probably not. Romans 5 says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure or possibly for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Okay? Even now, as a sinner, Christ has died for you. It's right there, but it's not appropriated to you. It's available to you, but it's not appropriated to you until you do what God commanded you to do. He didn't ask you. He's God. He commands you to repent. Turn away from your sin and believe by faith in what Christ did on that cross, and you will be born again. And God will give you the Holy Spirit so that you are no longer a sinner, but a saint. The sign doesn't say Satan, so I guess I'm free, right? Idolatry. Uh, I mean, That's idolatry. It's up there. Idolatry covers that, man. He said a Satanist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. That Christ died for sinners. But not all sinners are saved because not all sinners have taken him up on his commandment to repent. God who formed you in your mother's womb, you are not the God of your life. You can't expect to come into God's kingdom because you wanted to be a God over your own life and tell yourself, I'm going to do what I want to do. I don't care if there's a God in heaven. I don't care about this God that's holy. Even though he gave you your life, even though he gave you your breath, even though he gave you free will to choose what you would have in this life, either him or your sin. And yet most people choose their sin and most people choose to control their own lives. So if that's you and you die in that, don't expect God to open the gates of the kingdom of God for you. But to say to you, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. But that doesn't have to be the case, students. You, you study so hard to get a piece of paper that says you are now a graduate. You go to class for hours, you study for hours for a piece of paper that's just going to burn up. 
but yet you won't even lift a finger to find out who God really is and what he expects of you and what he's commanded you to do. And this is the condemnation that's come into the world. That light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And that's really what it is. Men and women don't want to come to Jesus because of the evil deeds. They don't want to be exposed. They want to keep their evil deeds hidden and keep on in them. But God wants to save you. God wants to cleanse you and purify you and make you a new creature in Christ. Don't reject his offer because your days are not promised. Your days are not promised. You could die tomorrow. You don't know when you're going to die. You don't know. A lot of people think they know. A lot of people walk around here as if they, they're never going to die. But if you don't know Christ, you have no reason to have any hope in the life to come. No reason at all. You just have baseless, false beliefs. No reason to have any hope outside of Christ. I pray that your ears will be open. Amen. Uh, I'm good for now, bro. The Bible says, do you not know the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Bible says, therefore lay aside all filthiness, overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word is able to save your soul. The Bible says, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way which leads to destruction. There are many who go in by it, but narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life. There are few who find it. You say, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. You will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Bible says, draw near to God, he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hand, you sinner, <coughs> and purify your heart, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself in the Son of God, and he will lift you up. Amazing how each and every day people die. People who had no plans to die that day die. People who are well known die. Take, for example, Bob Saget, the guy who played an innocent, hardworking, single widower on Full House years ago when I was a kid. He turned into a filthy comedian, telling filthy jokes. Yep. And they found him dead in his hotel room. I wonder where he went. I wonder where he will end up in the end. Do you think Bob Saget, with all his tour plans around the country to tell his filthy jokes, was planning to die that day? Of course not. Reason is another comedian, I can't remember her name. Oh, Betty White. No, this lady was telling a joke. Oh, and she she's fainted. Might be Christianity. Yeah. And she fell right there on the stage. That's right. Don't mess with God. You no know, King Herod in the Bible. He spoke. The crowd said he's like a voice of a god. He did not call them. He did not rebuke them and say no. Yeah. I don't have the voice of God. God struck him dead in the spot. And an eye of fire, claimed to be Christian. Amen. Lied to the Holy Spirit. God struck him dead in the spot. Yet you want to play games with your soul. 
Earlier today, a young man, very apathetic about eternity and where he's going to spend it, just shrugged his shoulders. Oh, well, there he is. The shrugged shoulder guy. Uh -huh. People shrugging their sure. shoulders like it doesn't matter. Being apathetic like it doesn't matter. God's going to deal with you. How you doing? Whereas we do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It's even but a vapor, a vapor that appears for a little time, then vanishes away. Each day the weather changes. Some day it's windy, some days it's not. Some days there's fog, some days there isn't. It changes, it comes and goes. That's like everybody's life. People mourn the loss of comedians like Bob Saget and Betty White and Robin Williams and different people who have died. Some have killed themselves even while they try to make others laugh. And the joke's on them. Yeah. They didn't repent. Amen. They didn't follow Jesus Christ. They reject the word of God. Reject the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's going to happen to you. You know what's going to happen tomorrow? Life's a vapor. It's here today. It's gone tomorrow. No matter how young you are, no matter how old you are. I talked to a man last night, 81 years old. He has terminal <coughs> cancer. He isn't right with God. But I talked to him about it. At least he was humble and listened and willing to receive. He might not, he could die any day. But don't think just because you don't have terminal cancer, the same thing couldn't happen to you. Yeah. People who are perfectly healthy get the jab, get a double jab, a triple jab, a quadruple jab, and they die. All kinds of health problems, health issues. There's people who are making these drugs up to give an account to God. Destruction they're causing, but they're jabs. It's amazing how people will go about their life, go about their everyday life of going to work, going back home, watching TV, going to bed and doing the same thing every day or going to school. They won't think about the one who's given them life and breath in your lungs. The one who created you, the one who made you, the one who sent his son to die for you. Will you not think about him? Amen. Doesn't he deserve your thoughts? Doesn't he deserve your attention? God commands all men everywhere to repent. He's commanding you to repent. Amen. To stop in your tracks. Go the other direction. Stop your sinning. Go and sin no more. Fornicators won't inherit God's kingdom. Drunkards. And drug users will not inherit God's kingdom. Liars and thieves will not inherit God's kingdom. The covetous, the lustful, the idolatrous will not inherit God's kingdom. Now God has not received rebels into his kingdom. His kingdom will be a place of complete and absolute purity. No sin will ever enter in there. If anyone was in it who sinned, they'd be kicked out. But thankfully, there'll only be saints there. A place of holiness. This place he created, he allowed sin for a time. But God has called sinners to repentance. Everywhere, every person, God has called to repentance. There's no good reason to continue in your sin no good reason to continue to be a sinner and go yeah, to hell for your sins in the also, end. If you decide, like, oh, you like to watch it, you can, they won't let you buy it. What are you doing with this man named Jesus who died for you? He laid down his life for you. His blood was shed for you. He's beaten and bruised and crucified for you. Are you going to ignore him? Are you going to be apathetic towards him? The only way of salvation is Jesus Christ. The only way to eternal life is the name of Jesus Christ. Oh,
To, to run your life. Amen. He's qualified. He's wise enough. He's kind enough. He's loving enough. He knows where your life needs to go. You're just going to make a mess of your life controlling it yourself. Submit your life to Jesus Christ instead. Follow Him. Obey Him. Serve Him. He deserves your allegiance, your worship. Stop giving your worship to idols. Things that are not God. <coughs> Why spend your money on things that are not bread? The Word of God says. Why spend your money on things that are not bread? It's not do you any good. They're not really sustain you. Or give you any kind of life. Jesus is the bread of life. Just come to me. You may have life. Is a manna from heaven. He comes down to give life to all men. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the light. He is the door. You must go through him. Trying to go the other way will not help you. Trying to find salvation or forgiveness some other way will not work. God will not receive you. You reject the way he has offered to you, the way through his son, Jesus Christ. If you take any other way, you're going the wrong way, on a one-way street. It's not going to turn out good for you. The way to the kingdom of God, the way to forgiveness of sin, the way to mercy and cleansing, and through Jesus Christ, is a one-way street. The other street is leading to hell. The street of Jesus is very narrow, very narrow-minded, very restrictive. But the way to hell, the other way, is very broad. Most people are on it. Yeah. It's the way to destruction. So if you look around, the world around you, and you're trying to fit in, you're trying to be like everybody else, or you're just like every the world around you, it's a sure sign you're on the wrong path. The Bible says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but it's of this world. And the world is passing away. You hear that? The world is passing away. Yeah. And the lust of it, but he that does the will of God abides forever. People try to find the fountain of life, try to find a way to live as long as they can, because that's all they have in this world. They're not right with God. They're not thinking upon eternal things, heavenly things. They're not heavenly minded. They're not the mind of Christ. You had the mind of Christ to be focused upon. Earth, not the earthly thing, but the heavenly and eternal thing, not the temporal thing. The God calls you to fix your eyes upon Jesus. He is eternal, and he leads to eternal life. Amen. Jesus said this is eternal life, knowing God the Father and the one he has sent. Do you have eternal life? Do you know God the Father? You know, the one he has sent, Jesus, came down from heaven, he suffered and bled and died for you, rose from the grave for your justification, he commands all men everywhere to repent. He's going to return. He's going to come back someday. And most of you are not ready for that return. How do I know that? Because you're not right with God. You're living in sin.
The Son of Man, that's him, will send out his angels. They will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness. And will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. The U.S. ears to hear, let them hear. See, God will bring a separation. God will bring a division with his sword, the sword of the spirit, the sword of the word of God. He'll bring a division not between people of different colors of skin, people from different countries, people who speak different languages. The separation on Judgment Day will be between righteous and unrighteous, Amen. the wicked and the holy. And the wicked will go to hell. And they won't be together like a big party, getting drunk, smoking pot, fornicating, being lesbians and homosexual. Oh, yeah. That's not what it'll be like, sinner. There'll be a fire there that cannot be consumed, that cannot be put it out. That's where you'll be forever. Be no thumbs up in hell. Be no party in hell. Be no, no cheering in hell. Just like the Bible said, I, I just quoted the scripture a minute ago, wailing and gnashing of teeth. You ever see someone wailing and gnashing their teeth? Do they do it because they're in pleasure? Do they do that because they have comfort and peace? Do they wail and gnash because they're enjoying what they're experiencing? Of course not. Ever see someone wail and gnash when they're partying? There's no wail and gnash when they're enjoying the pleasure of their sin. But that's what it'll be like in hell. Wailing and gnashing of teeth. Don't be cheering for it then. Won't be dressed in your provocative, wicked clothing then. You only have eternal regret on that day. That you didn't repent. That you didn't take the gospel seriously. That you didn't take the gospel of Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection with a sober mind. But instead, contain your sin and up in hell in the end. You have a space right now called life where God's calling you to himself, calling you to repentance, calling you to give up your sin and give up your life and turn it over to Jesus Christ. That space of your life will come to an end. And then there will no longer be hope for you. There will be no more opportunities to repent when you pass in this world. No more opportunities for the mercy of God. It's not called mercy day, it's called judgment day. Why? Because judgment happens on that day, of course. Mercy is not given out on judgment day. Just judgment. And you don't want the judgment of God. Some people don't like my message because I think it's judgmental. Well, if you think I'm judgmental, wait till you meet my God. He won't just judge what he sees out of your life, but what he hears out of your mouth, what he sees in your thoughts, what he sees in the motives and intents of your heart when you supposedly do good things. God's going to judge it all. And most of you aren't ready. You can laugh and mock all you want. It's not going to help you on Judgment Day, sinner. You can laugh and mock God's word or God's preacher and consider it foolishness. But a Bible says, sure proof, you are perishing. You're perishing. Get right with God while you still can. Your life is but a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. It's amazing how people mock and scoff and laugh and joke. Don't see me smiling. It's a sober thing, a serious thing. 
take your pictures, you take your videos, you put them on the internet. It was a one big game. Newsflash, there'll be no Instagram in hell. If there was Instagram in hell, no one would ever want to go there. That's right. <laughs> Amen. We have the Instagram of hell and scripture. Yeah. And a tell is exactly what it's going to be like. Describes in a very explicit detail what hell will be like. And you ignore it to your own shame. Yeah. There'll be no TikTok in hell, no Snapchat, no laughs, no Chinese spyware on your phone to track your every movement and collect all your information. For the CCP. <coughs> but God, He is the eternal spyware. He is everything you do, say, or think. There's the motives and intents of your heart. He's got a book, not a computer, a book. He's writing it all down in. And on Judgment Amen. Day, who opened the books of your life and will call you to give an account according to His word, He will judge the book of your life. According to all things and written in his word. And let's face it, if you're a sinner, you haven't matched up. You haven't done what is right. You've done what is wrong. And wrongdoers are called sinners in God's universe. And sinners will not inherit his kingdom, only ex sinners, former sinners. Man. That's precisely why Jesus said, Go and sin no more. Amen. But he wants you to stop your sin, stop your foolishness, repent or perish, comply or fry, turn or burn. But the scripture teaches, some don't like it, but it's the facts. The Bible makes it clear that God is angry with the wicked every day. He's getting his sword ready, he's fastening his bow. Going to destroy the wicked. Are you ready for that? But yet he even has mercy available for the wicked. If they'll but humble themselves and turn and live. Humble themselves and turn to Jesus Christ and live. He will give them life. He will save them by his grace. For it's by grace through faith that sinners are saved from their sin. Not only does God save you from the punishment of your sin, He saved you from the guilt and shame of your sin, and saves you from the committing of your sin. Yeah. Amen. He changes you. The Bible calls it becoming born again. And if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. All the old things have passed away. Behold, all has become new. That's my testimony 24 and a half years ago. Yeah. June 1997, in my bedroom by myself. No preacher nearby. No church building. No lights turned down with soft music playing. No hand going up and praying a sinner's prayer. Or asking Jesus into my heart. Just giving up my sin turning in faith to Jesus Christ. And a moment in time, in my bedroom at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, when it's all the filthiness going on around me in that building, drunkenness, fornication, drug use, filthy mouths, all around me, the same person, that's what I was too. God saved me out of that filth. He changed me. Made me a new creature. I put away it all. I stopped hanging out with my wicked friends. Started hanging out with Jesus. He gave me new friends. Friends that loved him, loved his word, want to obey him. That's what God gave me. And God can give you the same thing, but you gotta repent. Amen. You gotta give up your sin. You cannot have Jesus and your sin. It's one or the other. And Jesus calls you to repent. You can't have him and your sin. The modern-day American supposed church would tell you that you can have Jesus and continue in sin, no big deal. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Jesus calls you to repent. Stop your sinning. 
to forsake your sinning, to seek the Lord while he may be found, to call upon him while he is near. How you doing? Let the wicked forsake his way. You can't stand a word you're saying, man. It's like you're mumbling. Truth of God's word, man. Not a joke. <laughs> Don't be laughing at him. Nope. That's some bullshit. Everybody going to hell. You will too. No, I'm not. Nope. You won't be laughing there, There's sinner. No meeting there either. Not Why gonna be laughing know? there. Solitary confinement. Not gonna be there, sinner. Nope. You won't see me there. I love God and obey Him. You obey God and mock His word. It's all full truth. You call God's word. Same like it. There'll be no laughing on that day for sinner. No laughing on Judgment Day. When last time we saw a criminal? Getting ready to be put away for j in jail for life, laughing. There's videos oh. all over YouTube that show criminals who break down when they get life sentences. You know what's gonna happen to you when you end up in hell? You know what's gonna happen to you when you end up in hell forever? You'll be laughing, joking, mocking. You have your phone out taking pictures and video then? No sinner. Nope. Be sobriety. Be trembling. Go ahead and watch those videos on YouTube, all these criminals trembling before an earthly judge getting them on a life sentence in jail. They fall down under despair yeah. and sorrow and grief just from going to jail for the rest of their physical earthly life. Imagine going to eternal torment forever. Forever. We'll see how you are then. See how much you mock and scoff then. No laughing then. And even in jail cells, people sin. They do drugs. They break the law. They try to entertain themselves. They get prideful in their sports and their competitions, even in jail. But in hell, there'll be no pleasure at all. There'll be no recess from hell. There'll be no parole, no probation from hell. Be no slick lawyers that get you off, no corrupt judges to pay off, no hung jury. Just God, judge, jury, and executioner. He will deal with you. Yet even though this God is holy, he's righteous, he condemns sin and sinners, he's offering you eternal life. He's offering you his mercy, but it's a limited time offer. Amen. The offer will come to an end. Eventually it'll come to an end. And then it'll be too late for you. Then it's just eternal despair for you. <laughs> What's so funny, man? Explain to me your laughter. What's so funny about this? It's a it's a little it's a hold on. What's so funny, man? Liars. Like just every Muslims, everybody's just going to eat. Everybody. All sinners are. Hell. All sinners are going Thieves. to Everybody going to hell. <laughs> that that sounds like that the that's the laughter of fools right there. You're a fool, man. You're laughter a fool. of fools. You're a fool. That's what the Bible says. Laughter of fools. Bro, it's, it's literally gay people out here that's preaching in real life churches. Bro. It doesn't mean anything. What does that mean? Before God. It doesn't mean anything. Ministers, like, no, they're not. Not according to the Bible. In real churches. No. So y'all saying they not, they not, they, these not real churches. Then. The Bible not. says that. Of course not. They allow. The Bible says falsehoods will come in the last days. So you tell me y'all don't have no kids. Kids, you had a kid, yeah. Was you married when you had a kid? Yeah, yep. yeah. Lying. I'm lying. lying. Me too. I got four kids. Uh, y'all was not married when y'all had kids. Of course we were. What, both what of us. With you, man? You He's think got think eight. I've got four. We were both married. You think this world is so depraved and so messed up that people can get married? You think it's right, normal? 
when you had your first child? When I was married? When you had your first sexual interaction, let's say. Oh, uh, I was lost when that happened. You I, what? I was lost. I didn't know Jesus when oh, that happened. You was lost? Yeah. So you're going to hell too, right? No. Hold on, hold on. You're going to hell too, you're, right? You're missing on, Jesus no, now. No, no, no. no you're going to hell something. too, right? You don't hey, get it. What the Bible saying? You should have said to you. Okay. To the, you hold on, hold on. You're going to hell. Hold on. Hold on. The Bible you? says repent. Oh, you, you, I, I, you don't get it. What about, what about you? He doesn't get it. Oh, what I don't get. You don't get it. What I don't get. If you listen, you'll get it. Never have sinned in their lives. Never said that. We claim to have repented of our sins. Yeah. We're not a fool like you are anymore. We used yeah. to be just like you. Absolutely. Okay, so Mockers, scoffers. Because right now you're on your way to hell, but you don't have to go there. That's right. You need to so repent you, before you end up in hell, man. So you say, so you say, people can't repent before they before they die. So can you read? Like, like, can you read? You can read that, right? I only read the other side of your sign. Okay, well that's your fault. Well, you sitting up here. I walked past you, lad. You said I'm going to hell. You're mocking God's word. Bro, you're yes. mocking. You're on your way to hell. And you just sit right Period. here and said you did the same shit years ago. Come on now. Right. Okay, then we repented right. and, and came to Jesus. And then we don't do it anymore. That's right. By the blood of Jesus. But you I mean, love I, your sin, don't you? Have you done that? Have you repented of your sins? No. Have you turned to Jesus Christ in faith? Have you become born again? Hey, let me make things abundantly clear to you, sinner. I've done worse than you are. Worse! But Christ saved me, and now I'm different. That's different the message. Now, I'm born again now. You still love I your sin. Jesus Christ. I obey him and love him. You are still wicked. <coughs> You're on your way to hell. Repent before you end up in hell. He's not getting it. I don't think he wants to get it. No, you're right. That's the issue. He just wants to mock. He wants to mock and scoff and laugh. Instead. Oh, she witnessing to him? Okay. Praise God. Okay, sister. He was the first one to judge. <laughs> His laughter is a judgment. Yeah. He's laughing at us and saying it's laughing for us. Yeah. That's, that's Absolutely. Sounds like she's telling the truth. Amen. Well, praise God. There we go. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how you hey. doing? Good. So what you all's What's y'all's pitch? I, I see a lot of the signs and stuff like that. Well, we're not making any pitches. We're no, sales. we're not sales. I, yeah, I agree with everything you're saying. It's just... Praise God. I, but. but. <laughs> Where's the but? I, it's, you don't like our methods? Our I, approach? I do have... It does appear... I guess the gospel is inflammatory, but I think it, it might be more receptive to unbelievers if <coughs> it was shown with a little bit more love. Okay, so explain to me this. When Jesus in Matthew 23 called the Pharisees whitewashed tombs full of dead man's bones, they travel over land and sea to make a convert twice the son of hell they are. Was he being inflammatory? Oh, he definitely was. Okay, so Can what we're doing is not wrong then. Yeah. I think... You're speaking from pragmatism, not biblical principle. I think it's just... It is. I think it's only going to turn people away. That's not true. No, right? not true at all. It is for 17 years now. Almost Six for me. Alive. That's not the case. Okay. So you're wrong about that. But but we don't we don't do things pragmatically. Right. That's right. We do things biblically. Okay. So that includes rebuking the prideful. Yeah. And the wicked, like I'm doing with him. That that includes the young man over there. Were he giving you all some crap? Well, he was mocking and scoffing the word of God, so I was rebuking him. It's not a matter of him giving me crap and me trying to reply to him and try to, yeah. you know, have a game of back and forth. Oh, I got you. You got me. It's a matter of giving the truth. The Bible says, open rebuke is better than love carefully concealed. It says, uh, convince rebuke is with all long suffering and teaching. That's what we're going to do. So if someone's humble, I'm not, rebu I'm not rebuking you right now, right? Okay. If someone's humble, I give them grace. If someone's prideful, 
I give him the law, I give him rebuke, I give him hell, fire, right. and judgment. The Bible teaches. And so that's why Jesus treated the Pharisees that way. Now, he treated everyone that way. When caught, woman, uh, caught in adultery, mm -hmm. he treated her that way. When went to well, he treated her that way. But people want to take those two examples and make, oh, you got to treat everybody that way. That's right. He didn't treat everybody that way. He did John the Baptist, he did the apostle. They didn't treat everybody that way. And so the way we respond to people, the message is always the same. Mm -hmm. But the, what's part of the message we focus on and how and what way we deliver it is dependent upon the person themselves. So if they're full of grace, I, if they're full of humility, I give them grace. If they're full of pride, I give them the law. I give them judgment. I give them rebuke. But you see all throughout the scripture, whether it's the Old Testament prophets, John the Baptist, Jesus, all the apostles, beginning and end, you see that from beginning to end. Yeah. And that's what I want to be like, biblical. So I don't judge my effectiveness or my preaching by the reaction of the sinner. That's right. That'd be foolish. I judge it according to the biblical principle. Mm -hmm. If Jesus judged his preaching by the reactions of sinners, well, listen, he was crucified. Mm -hmm. They showed their extreme disapproval of him by lying about him and having him put to death. If he would judge his preaching by them, he was a complete and utter failure. Yep. John the Baptist had his head cut off. Jeremiah, too. Because he told Herod <laughs> that he was a wicked adulterer. Right? So, I don't judge. If these people react the way they do. The young man, he walked away now. I don't know if you saw him. But people react the way they do because they, they love their sin and they hate God. And I'm not going to judge my preaching by a sin-loving God here. That's true. Judge it by according to the Word. Yeah. Can I just... Do you mind if I pray with you guys? Well, I mean, I'd, I'd rather you, you pray in private. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what you're going to pray for. Or <laughs> yeah. Or, okay. I don't yeah. Know yeah. That's what I'll do. Pray for us in private, man. Okay. You guys have a good one. Yeah. Okay. Take care. Jesus can save you from pot smoking. He can save you from drunkenness. He can save you from a miserable, wicked, sinful life. He can save you from gossiping about people and lying about them to your friends. He can save you from that too. But he can save you from it. People draw near to the mouth, honor with the lips, but their heart is far from me. A young man, the older man, yeah. by earlier said, they're not real Christian. That's Just what he said. That's why I rebuked him when they walked by earlier when you were preaching. Oh, wow. He said to his friend. And his friend, when we were like it was no big deal. So. That's gossip. Jesus Christ can save you from your irrational fears. Take care, Mark. Oh, no, you're good, man. No, I found a dollar on the ground. Oh, no, you can give it to give it to like the poor or something. Oh, okay. Or some of that needs I mean, it. I, 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 don't know. Yeah, I just found it on the ground. That's all right, bro. I'm good. Appreciate it. Mark, right? Yes, sir. All right, man. Take Adam. Yeah, thank you, brother. Take care. <laughs> Jesus Christ will save you from that kind of fear. But Jesus said, and I say to you, my friend, do not be afraid of those who can kill the body and act to have no more they can do, but I will show you whom you should fear. Amen. Fear him who, after he is killed, has power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. Amen. Yeah. Now, fear God, not man, not the inventions of man, not the breaths of man. Oh, you don't want to take the jab? No work for you. You don't want that jab? No travel for you. <laughs> Here's what they said. Yeah. Here's what God said. I'm not going to put an experimental medicine in my body and be a guinea pig. That's right. So many people want to have life as normal. You treasure your life as normal, so-called. You do whatever it takes to continue your life as it is. But I wonder what's going to happen when the mark of the beast actually comes. And the Antichrist says, bow down and worship me with this mark on your forehead and on your right hand, or you cannot buy or sell. I wonder what you'll do then. This is a free person for that. The devil has shown his card, so to speak, what he's going to do later on. Yeah. And most of you have failed miserably. That's exactly what the Bible says will happen in the end. Most of you will fail miserably. Take the mark of the beast and bow down and literally worship the Antichrist, Satan in flesh. And you'll end up in hell, doomed forever. But once you take the mark of the beast, there's no turning back. There's no repentance of that. The word of God says in Revelation 14, no repentance of that. So get right with God. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Amen. Begin to live a holy life and persevere therein that when these times come upon us, you're ready for it. You're prepared for it. 
will be given over to the wickedness. So even though these muzzles people wear in their face, these jabs are getting put in their body are not the mark of the beast. They're precursors. They're preparation yeah. for you. Amen. So you can repent of your fear of man, repent of not caring about your health, and do what is right next time. Get right with God. He will give you the strength. He will give you the boldness, the courage to stand up for what is right and do what is right. Definitely. God is binary. God only sees two genders, male and female. That's right. God does not respect a man who dresses like a woman, a woman who dresses like a man. God doesn't look upon those things favorably. You say, I'm a man and a woman's body. I'm a woman and a man's body. God doesn't look upon it favorably when you cut off body parts. Try to put other ones on when you take hormone blockers. Got to look upon that respectfully. It is great. Instead, he calls you to repentance. Instead, he calls you to do what is right. God will judge every idle word that comes out of your mouth and bring it into judgment. A good man out of the good treasure's heart brings forth good things. Evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things with lies, gossip, filthy language, <laughs> blaspheming God's name. All those things are sins with your mouth. God will bring you to give an account of those sins, those sins. But God can give you a clean mouth. He did with me. I was a potty mouth. But every other word in my mouth was a cuss word. I was a sinner. When I became a saint of God, a Christian, he cleaned it up just like that. Just like that. He cleaned up my mouth. I stopped cussing immediately. I think in the last 24 and a half years, I've cussed once. One time. Immediately full of shame and guilt and immediately repented of my sin. Yeah. When I was a sinner, I didn't feel any guilt or shame at all over my filthy mouth. It was normal mm -hmm. to me. It poured out. Like water out of that waterfall, right? That fountain right there poured out like it was no big deal. It was natural. When Christ came in, it became natural of a pure mouth flowing out of a pure river of my heart. The Holy Spirit now living inside of me. God can do the same thing for you. I'm no one special. God doesn't play favorites. I was a wicked sinner. Probably more wicked than most of you. Christ saved me, saved me, gave me new life. He wants to give you life as well. God takes no delight in the death of the wicked, but rather they turn and live. You know, it's not healthy to walk around all day breathing your own carbon dioxide. God meant your lungs for oxygen. That's right. Not cigarette smoke, not vape smoke, not pop smoke, oxygen. <clears throat> the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But tell me, the people who want you to, to breathe in your own carbon dioxide all day, are they on the devil's side, kill, steal, and destroy, or Jesus' side, life and life abundantly? Yeah. I'll tell you, the few times I've worn a mask, I didn't feel life abundantly That's right. in my face. Follow Jesus, he died for you. Live for him. Scripture says that in Revelation, right at the very back of the Bible, 22, 14, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city and the city he's talking about there is the city of God, the eternal city, New Jerusalem, that the Bible says will come and descend, and Jesus will return and rule and reign from Jerusalem, from this New Jerusalem, of which are not allowed dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, 
And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. People that presently love, actively walk in, promote, and enjoy lies. Lies about God, lies about life, lies about salvation, lies about Jesus. Amen, that are not according to the true Jesus of the Bible. Scripture also says in Revelation, the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers, idolaters and all liars, again, liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Liars. Are you a liar? Are you lying about who God is and about life, about who Jesus is? Is your life a lie? Do you just live in this life for sexual pleasure, lustful pleasures, getting drunk, getting high? Are you a racist? Or do you hate other cultures? Do you hate other people because of the color of their skin? Are you a liar? Then you're not going to have any place in the kingdom of God. But Bible says, blessed are they that do, that do his commandments. There's a doing there and a doeth, a continual doing. And God has commanded you to repent so that you can have remission of sins by grace and turning to Jesus Christ away from sin, no longer continuing to do your sin, but to do his commandments. As Jesus said, if you look upon a woman, and women to men, with lust in your heart, you've committed adultery with her already in your heart. How many are porn watchers on this campus? Lusting after women, lusting after men, watching pornography, lusting after the same sex, lusting after the opposite sex. Jesus says you've committed adultery with them already in your heart. Repent, turn from it. There's coming a day and an hour where the judge of all the earth is going to return. And if you're not ready for that day, you've got to get ready today through repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. Don't listen to the Catholic doctrine that baptism saves, that taking a wafer and a wine will save you. These things are not works of the Spirit. Baptism is an answer of a good conscience to God, as Peter writes. It does not save you. Christ alone saves by his blood that was sprinkled on the mercy seat of God and faith in him, repentance from your sin. This is what Jesus preached. And people don't like it because they love their sin. This typical fake American gospel that says we're all sinners and we're always going to be sinners because we were born that way. And even as Christians, we're going to sin. That is nowhere in Scripture. But these patriotic Christians love America above Christ. They love their Donald Trump. They love their Joe Biden above Christ. If you love a political figure above Jesus Christ, you are an idolater. Whether it's Trump, Joe Biden, whoever else is going to come down the pipeline, Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, George Bush, these are men that are wicked and on the way to hell. And yet people follow them like they're gods. When you should be following Jesus. The Lord Jesus didn't tell us to take up guns and kill each other. He didn't tell us to go and conquer in his name. And so Catholic crusaders who took up arms and murdered Muslims and Jews and Christians during the crusades are wicked. And they are ordained by the Pope to do so. When biblical Christians would stand up against the Catholic Church, they will be murdered because they can't hold a candle to the Word of God as that empire tried to suppress the Word of God. 
But thank God his word cannot be suppressed because it's been given to every man and woman that no person would have a reason or an excuse before God to say, I didn't know, Lord. No, you knew. You just loved your sin more than Christ. You loved your sin more than God. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived by the world. Don't be deceived by fake Christians pretending to be sheep but really are wolves and love the world. Don't be deceived by progressivism. Don't be deceived by politics. The Bible says, be not deceived. Neither fornicators are those people that have sex before marriage. Neither idolaters are those that serve and worship another God other than the God of the Bible. If you love things more than God, nor adulterers, those that commit adultery and have sex with others that are not their husband or wife, nor effeminate. Effeminate are men that try to dress like women or even women try to dress like men. The Bible calls them effeminate. Abuses themselves of mankind, sodomites, homosexuals, nor thieves, those that steal, nor covetous, those that lust for more material goods than God grants them. They have no peace because they just lust for more and more. Covetous, coveting your neighbor's wife, coveting your neighbor's goods, not being content with what you have. Nor revilers, those that, that hate others, those that look upon others with evil intentions. Extortioners, those that take advantage of people for money. None of these shall inherit the kingdom of God. But look what it says for those that have been washed in the blood of Jesus through repentance of their sins and faith in Christ. And such were some of you. But ye are washed, ye are sanctified, ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. In the name of the Lord Jesus and the Spirit of our God. That means you can be an ex-homosexual. You can be an ex-transgender. You can be an ex-liar, an ex-fornicator, an ex-adulterer. Because these are the things that are taking you to hell and you can't even see it. And you say that we hate you, but you hate God. And you hate his word and you hate his ways. And so the truth sounds like hate because you hate the truth. But really, this is the love of God to tell you, stop. You know, stop. You're driving off a cliff. Turn around and turn to Jesus. Turn away from sin. Turn away from your pride. Humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, as Scripture says in James. It's a loving message. You don't love it because you love your sin. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. All sin, lay it aside and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Not baptism, the engrafted word of God that is able to save your soul from hell and save your soul from sinning. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Don't follow after the traditions of men, but follow Jesus and read his word that was already there before the Catholic Empire came into being. His word was already there in the ancient church before there was a Catholicism. There was a Christian ancient church. Before there was a Council of Nicaea, there was already the Word of God in the churches. 
There was already a trinity that was already going on. The Catholics didn't invent any of that. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Repent of your idolatry and be born again. Don't pray prayers to Mary. Mary doesn't hear you. Don't pray prayers to saints. The saints that have passed on from this body can't hear you. Don't pray prayers to your priests. That priest can't save you. The Pope is not the vicar of Christ. He's a wicked devil who pretends with his own authority to speak on Christ's behalf. And one day he will be judged as such. Repent of your idolatry and turn to Jesus Christ, Catholics. Believe me, I was an ex-Catholic and I compared that catechism to the Word of God and it doesn't line up. It doesn't line up. One day you're going to hear, hear those words. Listen to this, Catholics. Matthew 7. Nobody hates you, but this is out of love because I'm concerned about your soul. The Bible says in Matthew 7, and this is for Catholics and anybody that thinks that they're a Christian and walks in their sin. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, is it the will of my Father in heaven to pass out rosaries and tell people to pray to Mary? No, that's not the will of God. That's not the will of the Father. Is the will of the Father to teach people that baptism saves and taking a wafer and a wine saves you? No, that's not the will of the Father. What does it say? Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? I can hear the Catholics that have never been born again saying, Lord, Lord, we fed the poor. Lord, we prayed the rosary. Oh, Lord, I was baptized into the Catholic Church, Lord. Oh, Lord, I was out on campus sharing what the Catholic Church says. Oh, Lord, I'm a good person, Lord. I believed you. But Jesus says in Matthew 7, and then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You have another Jesus that's not according to the word of God. It's a different Jesus, a Jesus that is subservient to Mary, that is a co-redemptrix of Mary. It's another Christ. In the what? Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't, I, no, I don't. I, I, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> it could be different now. It's another Jesus. There's a lot of Jesuses floating around in the world. Doesn't make God go away. Atheism is the most foolish doctrine there is in the country. So you believe in Darwinian macroevolution? Well, if your parents are lost, then you're lost. Darwinian macroevolution is the stupidest theory that anybody's ever come up with. No, ma'am. Sure don't. There's a lot of Jesuses floating around. The Mormons have a Jesus that says that he's the brother of Satan and the, and the offspring of God the Father who was once a man and he was a good Mormon so-called and he got his own planet Earth and he had spirit babies with wives and one of them was Jesus and one of them was Lucifer and that he was created. Jehovah Witness have a Jesus that is also Michael the Archangel that was created and that is not worshiped. The Muslims have a Jesus that is only a prophet and only a good teacher, but he's not the son of God according to the Quran. 
And a lot of Americans have a Jesus that is okay with you sinning. That's okay because he loves you and he's going to accept everybody in the kingdom of God. He's not going to throw anybody into the lake of fire. So it's okay to keep sinning. This Jesus that smiles at sinners while they continue to sin against him because he's so loving and forgiving and kind that he, he wouldn't throw anybody in the lake of fire because he loves so much. This is not the Jesus of the Bible. The Jesus of the Bible is holy. And he calls men and women to repent of their sin, turn away from your sin, and to stop sinning. He gives you the power, not only cleanses you from your sin in the past that you've confessed, but he gives you the Holy Spirit to, to submit to and to keep you from sinning. But you have a will. You can choose to keep sinning or you can choose to submit to God. And God will give you the will and the to do of his good pleasure. He gives you the power to do it, but it's your choice. But don't think that the excuse is going to ride before God that, God, I was born a sinner, because you're not born a sinner. God didn't make you a sinner. He made you an innocent baby. Oh, God, well, I'm just a man. You understand that I'm going to sin? No, he doesn't understand that you're going to sin because he's provided a way. He's provided a way for you to stop sinning because when it comes down to it, the fact of the matter is, is that most people love their sin and they don't want to give it up. And for those that are truly ignorant, there's help for you. Those that are truly ignorant and that truly have some serious issues that you got yourself into and you feel like you have no control over it, there's power over it in Jesus but you still have a will to choose that sin or to choose Christ. So it really comes down to what are you going to choose? You can get mad at the preacher. You can flick him off. You can mock him. You can do all those, that song and dance and games. But at the end of the day, you're going to stand before Jesus Christ alone. And he is going to remind you of all the times that he tried to reach you and that you would not listen to him. All the excuses that you have now are going to fall dead at his feet. And there's not going to be one man or woman that will have an excuse as to why God sent them to the lake of fire. Because you have an opportunity now while you have breath in your lungs. You got so many opportunities in the world that you chase after degrees, athletics, friends, going to the club, drinking it up, smoking. You have all these opportunities to fulfill the lust of the flesh. But yet the thing that matters the most is your soul, which is eternal. Where is it going to be? Where is your soul going to be for eternity? That's what really matters. And the only one that can help you in that area is Jesus Christ. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever you sow in this life, you're going to reap in eternity. Whatsoever man sows, he shall also reap. Are you going to continue to sow to your flesh and entertain the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes and the pride of life and walk in sin and pretend as if it's not doing anything wrong? Or are you going to sow to the Spirit, repent of your sin, and begin to live for Jesus by faith that He can give you the power to overcome sin and death? As Scripture says in Romans, sin shall no longer have dominion over you. As of now, if you're walking in sin, sin has dominion over you. You're submitting to the devil, the devil who wants to steal your soul kill your soul and to see you destroyed in hell. But the one who loves you the most, the one who wants the greatest good for your soul, Jesus Christ, he stays neglected as long as you walk in your sin. So choose wisely. The Bible says, kiss the son, lest he be angry with you. You perish out of the way. Choose wisely. 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 God commands you. 
It's not a request. It's not a, it's not a like, please and thank you. It's a commandment to repent. And he has a right to command you because he created you. He commands you to repent and turn to him with all your heart and forsake your sins. We are saved by grace through faith. But that grace of God, according to Titus 2, that brings salvation, teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. Not only that, he gives us the power to overcome it in the spirit of God. But what do you want? You want to just chill? You want to be apathetic? Don't care about where your soul's going to go? You're going to care one day. You're definitely going to care one day. Yeah, you will. Oh, yeah, you will, young man. You will care one day. You will be. It's funny now. But you will be scared one day. And your little mocking and your little fun you're having in front of your friends, they won't be there with you. You'll be alone with God, facing eternity without Christ. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of Almighty God, the Bible says. And if you're facing that without Christ, you're not going to be like, I don't care. Ah, who cares? You're not going to be like that, I guarantee you. You're going to be begging and pleading Jesus not to throw you into the lake of fire. But by then it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late because now, today is the day of salvation. Today is a time of grace that God has given you. You, you woke up another day, you have another opportunity to turn to Jesus. To turn to Jesus and away from your sin, away from your your prideful life. You have another opportunity right now. God has given you. He doesn't have to give it to you. You're an enemy of his if you're walking in sin. You're not his friend. Just because you get blessed with money or things to do and good things in his life doesn't mean you're his child. The Bible says that he's good to the just and the unjust. You're only his child through Jesus Christ. You're a creation of God. You're a creation of God, but you're not a child of God unless you are in Christ Jesus, the Savior of the world. And in Him you have life. Amen. condemned the one that God wants you to talk to but you're scared you to offend and I am the outcast rejected inside who I'm looking for answers but I'm blinded by pride to come out and preach preach unto me Tell me the secret to eternity. Be bold and speak and reach out to me. No, I can't save myself, but I want to be free. And there's something inside you I need. Oh, there's something deep down 